Okay, in this video I want to discuss the dihedral angles and uh, answer a few questions about them. So what I drew here is just a tripeptide. It's very simple. And what I want us to recall is that there's a lone pair on this nitrogen and there's a lone pair on this nitrogen. And that lone pair can actually form a resonance structure in which there's a partial double bond character between this carbon, this carbon here and this nitrogen. So if we redraw the peptide and we show that, we can see the partial double bond character here. And um, this just demonstrates that this is a real thing, this is a legitimate resonance structure, there's nothing, um, nothing strange going on here, basic, you know, organic chemistry type of stuff. So there's charges on here, this is R3, and this ends up just like this. So we can see that there's partial double bond character here. Now what does that have to do with anything? Um, the first thing to say about it is that, again recall from organic chemistry, that a double bond is rigid. It introduces rigidity, there's no free rotation around it. Even though these are not full on double bonds, that this is only one resonance form, there is this partial character because of the resonance form that does not allow free rotation around those positions, around this peptide bond. So what ends up happening is then somebody might say to you, well, what is a dihedral angle? So what is a dihedral angle? And it says, what is a dihedral angle? And dihedral angles are basically phi and psi angles between the N and C alpha and the C alpha and the C that have a certain range of, all of allowable values. So there's a specific range of allowable values between the C alpha and the nitrogen and the C alpha and the C. So if we're looking at this peptide here and you, you might say, well, which bonds are those? There's this one here where there's allowable rotation and because this is between the N and the C alpha. So this is what's known as the phi angle. So I'll draw the symbol for phi there. And then there's also free rotation around the C alpha C angle. So that's that would be this one right here. So there's a rotation around there. And that's called the psi angle. So I'll draw this symbol. There's symbols for both of these. So there is some free rotation here, but again, there's no free rotation there. So if I were defining what maybe what a dihedral angle is, I would say that a, a dihedral angle is phi and psi. angles between the N and I'd say C alpha and the C alpha C and the C alpha C that have a certain that have a certain range of allowable values. A certain range of allowable values. And while these phi and psi angles also play a role, I mean there can also be other issues with steric hindrance um, between the R groups. So depending on the charge on the side chain, depending on how big the R group, this R group is. I mean, here in these, I just designated them R1, R2, and R3, so I didn't put a particular group on there. But there can also be steric concerns around these phi and psi angles that would prevent them, for, for, for prevent other allowable angles. So, I thought I'd um, just mention that. And also, 
another an interesting question relating to these dihedral angles that that might come up is why are they more informative than simple angles so what what makes these better than simple angles what makes them what makes them more useful to us and the, these angles basically more accurately describe the molecular geometry than the simpler angles be to, than the simpler angles because they take into account the 3D structure. So the reason these are better. So the reason these are a better description of the um, or more descriptive or more informative than simple angles is because these angles more accurately describe these angles more accurately describe the molecular the molecular geometry the molecular geometry than simple angles than the simple angles because they take into account take into account the 3D structure so the three-dimensional structure so if I were asked say what are dihedral angles and why are they more informative than simple angles what I would say is dihedral angles are phi and psi the angles between the n and c alpha and the c alpha c that have a certain range of allowable values. So there's only a certain number of allowable values, and these angles are these angles more accurately describe the molecular geometry than simple angles because they take into account the three-dimensional structure. And I made a little model here, so hopefully we'll be able to see it, of just a very simple. Um, dipeptide here. So basically what I did was I set this up so that I have my terminal N, N terminus, and then I have my R group designated in green, C alpha here. This is my other carbonyl group here. My peptide bond right here. And then another R, R group over here. And my C terminus. So what I basically just wanted to show you was that this angle that we're talking about that doesn't allow free rotation is right here. So there's a lone pair on this on this nitrogen that can be kicked over here. One of these double bonds can kick the electrons up here, negative charge here and a positive charge here. So there's partial double bond character right here. So this is not able to be freely rotated. But if we look over here and we look at this angle here, this is your phi angle and this is your psi angle over here. So those are capable of free rotation. Of course, there are steric concerns depending on what this R group is over here. Um, but basically, you're able to then take this here and rotate around here. So you're able to do things like that. And you can rotate freely around here. And you can also rotate freely around this angle here. So something like that. And I just wanted to kind of, you know, I guess show a molecular model here and just kind of give an idea of what something like that would look like. And I think it's a good idea to, you know, pick a model set up if you don't have one to uh, just play around with some of these things. I mean, it's possible to get through uh, organic chemistry and biochemistry without one. I, I never used one in either of my courses. And it's just more recently that I've become more interested in understanding more about um, how these molecules look in three-dimensional space that I started making more models. So... A little tip.